Hi, Phil Chandler here. It's been a slow year for swarms to 2021. Uh, this in this area anyway, I know elsewhere it's been maybe different, but uh, down here in South Devon, it's been very slow. And uh, I've just taken a swarm here in this basket, which I'm about to put into this top bar hive. Uh, this swarm has been, I collected this morning and uh, it's quite a decent sized one. It's a prime swarm, so that's gonna go straight into the top bar hive here. Uh, over here is why I always leave at least one and preferably more empty hives in an apiary. This is an old, um, well I say old, it's not that old, it's a Lang Langstroth uh, nuke box and it's had bees in it quite recently and these bees have swarmed from one of my hives, I'm not sure which one yet, um, into, straight into this box which is great because it saves me a job. So it's always a good idea to leave a a hive or a nuke box uh, empty in your apiary because if a swarm does emerge that you've uh, missed or haven't done anything about then um, they, they can rehouse themselves quite quite easily and that's uh, always a good thing I think. There's a hive down here this is a possible source of the swarm that's the strongest hive pretty much I've got in this apiary they may have swarmed and uh, occupied the other one this one's occupied too a couple of the top bar hives are have bees in and the over there is the zest hive let's have a quick look at the zest hive this one has done very well i have to say um, thanks uh, to william summers for his design this hive is really strong and thriving you can see it's one colony in this big tomb shaped hive uh, which is made of um, insulating blocks and you can see the the top entrance here, the upper entrance, is very busy with bees returning from their foraging with pollen and nectar. And down here, this other entrance is also being used, but the bees are kind of hanging around. They're not, there aren't so many flying bees going down here. There are some, but not very many compared to that one. I haven't been in here yet this year. Um, it's a big, big colony, so they are definitely looking after themselves very well and I'm not uh, in any great hurry to go in there because why disturb bees when they're working happily and doing their thing. There's a Layens hive up there which is not yet occupied, that'll be my next project I think. And there's a couple of nukes down here which are all being used at the moment. So next job is to put this uh, new swarm in that I've just collected and they're going to go into this top bar hive here. Maybe I should say that this is how I tend to uh, catch swarms in a skep, straw skep, um, made by, uh, this one was made by Mick Mail of Chudley. So inside here we've got, we can see the bees, there's a skep, straw skep uh, full of bees and the, the, the sheet is just there to obviously stop them flying around while I'm in the car with them. They've been in the uh, car for 20 minutes or so, but I, what I do when I'm transporting bees like this, I always spray the, the sheet and the basket with water because that helps to keep them cool by evaporative cooling, of course.
So that wasn't the um, the tidiest uh, shakedown I've ever done, but it was okay. And I've left uh, lots of gaps at the top for the bees to find their way down. And now it's just a matter of being patient, really, and uh, just letting them settle. Quite a few bees uh, randomly on the woodwork here, and uh, largely they will find their way in. I'm gonna, I may have to give them a little bit of a hand to uh, to push them in the right direction, but <laughs> it was a bit messy, I have to say. It wasn't the best. They'll be fine though. They'll settle. I did prepare this uh, hive slightly by putting some water into. A couple of the combs that are in there there's some old comb in there which is perfectly usable um, but there's no food in it of course so I've just sprayed some water into it so that they've got something to drink straight away um, I could give them some food I might give them some food actually because the nectar has been fairly sparse of late but we have got a, a week of sun ahead of us so they should settle in nicely there should be some nectar around now and uh, they should be okay they'll be, they'll be building comb um, prodigiously in the next week. This year's been quite a tricky year. A number of colonies have starved when they really shouldn't, or at least they got very hungry. And I've been feeding right into May, which is, well, unheard of actually. I've never ever in 20 years fed bees in May before. But this year it's been necessary because they've been so hungry. It's been cold and wet. Uh, before that it was dry in April. And we had a nasty easterly wind which kept the, te kept the temperature down. So uh, it's been a tricky spring altogether. Um, however, this colony has done very well, obviously. And where I picked the swarm up from has obviously uh, kept them going very nicely over the spring. So they, they are prosperous and uh, have t full tummies ready to go. And uh, they should do well here, I think. It always takes a while for bees to settle into a new hive. There's a lot of fanning going on and I've left gaps for them so they can see their way down or smell their way down more likely into the uh, hive proper. Uh, bees right up at the end here and they will in due course find their way along to where the rest of the bees are. A couple fanning here. The actual entrance to this hive is down here and you can see there's bees already sort of spilled out of it a bit. Um, but there'll be uh, fanning going on around there and the bees will find their way in quite happily. There's a point at which you just basically leave them to it, but I, I want to make sure that at least I can get the bars together before I leave because um, I don't want to leave bees uh, hanging around on the inside the roof particularly and I want to put the insulation back so I will wait until they are all inside and I can encourage them a little bit with the water spray. Of course if you prefer to use smoke you can, that also works. Um, I prefer to use water. I uh, don't like the smell of smoke, I don't want to be breathing it in, I don't suppose the bees do either. So uh, water has a very similar effect, um, albeit maybe not quite as quickly in some cases, but it does at least uh, do, the, do the job of getting their heads down without having to fill the place with smoke. This is a pump-up spray, this one. You, you just pump it up a number of times and then you just press the trigger and it sprays continuously. Uh, a lot of advantages to that, of course, you don't have to keep squeezing it and if you need a continuous mist of water then you just press the button and there it is. Uh, it holds a good amount of, of uh, water and it's also quite stable. It doesn't fall over too easily like some of the taller ones do. So this is a good option for, for sprays. There's a couple of spoonfuls of sugar in this. Um, I suppose I, my thinking is there just to give them a sort of a, a little reward perhaps for, for, being, for being drenched. Well, you know, I don't actually drench them, but you know, it's just a very light spray like this. Don't overdo it because uh, 
I guess it could chill them. Um, too much water isn't, uh, isn't a good thing for bees, I'm sure. But a light mist doesn't do them any harm and they get the reward of uh, getting to lick sugar off each other, I suppose. I would never put um, a strong sugar solution, certainly nothing like one-to-one -one or anything as strong as that uh, in here because what you don't want is a sort of thin film of sugar over everything um, because, uh, well, certainly on the bees, I think it would dry out fairly quickly in the heat of the hive and it could kind of encrust their wings and make it difficult for them to fly, which isn't great. Um, I know they will obviously groom each other, so they, they will benefit to some extent from that, but I think a very, very weak sewer solution is perfectly okay. It just gives them a little bit of water with just a suggestion of sweetness to it. So they seem to like it anyway. They seem to lap it up quite happily. It doesn't seem to do them any harm. I'm going to have to try and close up these gaps because I don't want them to start thinking that this is the official entrance to the hive and some of them will do that in, in a fairly short time. They'll start orientating to these gaps and uh, that's not going to be useful in the long run because we want them to use the entrance. When you're inspecting a hive it's always a good idea just to leave one working gap and, and this, this is kind of why really because if you have multiple gaps like this when it comes time to close up you're going to have a, quite a problem on your hands because bees are really curious creatures and they, they love investigating narrow spaces for some reason so it can take quite a while to close up multiple gaps so when you're working it's best to just leave the one uh, on this occasion I deliberately left several because I want to get as many bees inside as quickly as possible but uh, when you're working I would suggest just leave one gap often just a mist of water will be enough to get their heads down in between the gaps but sometimes you have to be a little bit more persuasive and uh, there are various ways of doing that you can nudge them down with your hive tool if you're gentle you can use blades of grass to, 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 to nudge them down um, and uh, otherwise it's just a matter of being patient and waiting till they decide to go down of their own accord I suppose using a few blades of grass to brush them down in the, from this gap because I don't want to crush any bees and uh, grass is nice and gentle on them it doesn't uh, do any damage unlike some other things like bee brushes are notorious for causing damage to bees especially the ones that are unaccountably made of horsehair which is um, given that horses and bees don't really get on is, is quite an interesting choice of brush material okay so this is a this is a situation you often end up with with a, a gap like this and it's full of bees and you just need to get them to get down inside the hive so we're just going to nudge them poke and prod them with some gentle persuasion there's always one that comes up into the gap at the last minute. A bit more water. Blade of grass. Come on girls, get your heads down. There we go. No, there's one there. And we're done. There's a bunch of bees up here who haven't quite figured out what's going on yet. They will in due course find their way into the hive. I shall just lower the camera into the hive. I can't see what's going on in there but of course the camera's now upside down because I'm holding it by its uh, little tripod -y thing and maybe you can see what's going on in there there should be a big cluster of bees halfway down this lot at the end here well we can we could brush them in a bit but they will get the message they'll go and join their friends very shortly and uh, all will be well so there's bees already fanning around the entrance they're indicating to their friends, their sisters if you like, uh, that this is now the entrance, this is where they are going to be flying in and out, so they're already starting to orientate, as you see there's a little bit of orientation flying going on at the front, and so we can now pop the insulation back on, 
Uh, I'm tempted to leave a little gap here, but I think the bees will figure it out themselves. There was actually a mouse in this hive when I opened it. it was, it's an empty hive and it has been for a, for a while, but uh, there was a mouse as I, as I opened the hive, um, I lifted up one of the old uh, pillows that I was using for insulation and um, I sort of shook the pillow not knowing that there was a mouse on it and it fell off or jumped off into these uh, brambles here so hopefully it'll find itself a new home because if it comes back here it's going to get a bit of a shock. Okay that's the end of the operation the bees will do the rest they'll settle in they'll be fine and they'll uh, start flying and foraging very soon if they haven't already.